It seems we now live in an age that is beyond parody, since about 2016 it feels like, because I read headlines all the time, and I think, am I reading The Onion? Is this like another satire site? And then, depressingly, if it's about, you know, this hellscape capitalist dystopia we live in, it's about something to do with, like, Amazon and workers' rights, or it's something ridiculous some Republican politician has said about a whole number of issues. Now, I made a video about two weeks ago talking about how conservatives suddenly love the Taliban, like they're calling them based and everything, because deep down, these two groups, American conservatives and Islamic fundamentalists, do have a lot more disagreements than they'd like to admit. Now, something I've been seeing on social media a lot is also Taliban meme accounts. Now, these are people who are seemingly in the Taliban right now, on the front lines, taking over the country, who are also posting memes, using like the most common memes you see, like the Soy Jack one, the Chad meme, and even like the alt-right's favorite, the Pepe the Frog meme. And it probably surprises no one that of course, a lot of people who support the Taliban in Muslim countries like this stuff, also a lot of Western alt-right also love this stuff because like I said before, these guys do like the Taliban broadly, and if the Taliban were Christians, they'd probably really, really like them. The only thing that they don't like about them is the fact that they are Muslims and they are darker skinned. Because they're both against Jewish people, trans rights, and often US imperialism. Now that might sound weird coming from the alt-right, but to them it's because US imperialism is done at the behest of Israel, not because these guys are are against war or something. So today I thought it would be fun to look through these new Taliban meme accounts and just talk about the stuff they're posting. And then at the end, we will talk about why this has appeal to conservatives and the alt-right who you'd think would probably hate Islamic fundamentalist um, insurgent groups, I guess. Now I'm gonna plug my social media and Patreon for about one minute, so skip that stuff if you're not interested. Before we get any further, a lot of my work on this channel is demonetized because when you're covering more serious, sometimes edgier topics, YouTube doesn't like this. So if you've ever enjoyed my work, please consider becoming a patron. And you don't have to pledge a crazy amount. I want to build up my Patreon based on as many people as possible, pledging little amounts, like a dollar or two. So if, you know, you feel like I have ever brought anything that's worthwhile into your life and my content, please really consider becoming a patron to help me continue to do this, regardless of if YouTube monetize or not most of my videos in a given month. Also, if you want to join our communities, come check out our Discord and my subreddit. Those links are in the description. And if you want to follow me personally, please check out the Cavernacle at Twitter, at Instagram, and also my personal Reddit where you can keep up to date with all my content and what I'm doing. Hopefully, I'm going to get back to streaming this week. I normally do it two times a week, and I archive all that stuff on the Cavernacle Extra, my second channel. Go check that out. Also, for every 5k, we get a new chocolate orange. Help me build this pyramid as high as it can go by the end of the year. I'm hoping we can add two new chocolate oranges onto this pyramid by the end of the year. So now let's get into Taliban meme accounts. Now, this guy seems to be the most prominent. His name is Malang Koste, and he has two accounts for doing this stuff. Now, he has about 33,000 followers, and his bio says, hoping for the rule of law in Afghanistan. Now, it's impossible to verify if this guy's in the Taliban, but a lot of journalists think he is. And his profile picture is of a guy who's in the Taliban because he posts my pics. So he has pictures of him in various different, you know, places in Afghanistan and kitted out in military gear as well. So this could very much definitely be him. It could also be someone running the account for him, but regardless if this is totally legit, what this guy at least is, is basically a propagandist for the Taliban. He's also very well connected, and I'll show you later, because he has a YouTube channel that has footage that seemingly is captured on handheld cameras and mobile phones, which he posts on his channel. And overall, I've seen a lot of fake accounts with stuff like this. This guy does seem more, I guess, legit than a lot of stuff, but I'm just gonna put it out there. This guy isn't 100% confirmed to be in the Taliban, but all the evidence seems to indicate he actually is. So let's get into his memes, I guess. So here is one of the most telling ones. 
He likes to tweet a lot of Stone Toss comics, and the Stone Toss comics are usually far right. So he tweets this, but the government has tanks and jets, how do you beat that? And it has the Taliban waving goodbye to the Western jets and tanks. I guess it's trying to insinuate like, in America, you shouldn't stand up for your rights because, you know, the government has overwhelming force and the guy in the picture also has a don't tread on me snakes, some weird libertarian. And Malang also retweeted Stone Toss when the Afghans kicked out the US government, when the Afghans kicked out the communists and when the Afghans kicked out the British. Everyone seems to hate the British the most. Now Malang also tweeted another Stone Toss comic which has the Taliban pulling on a rope with someone who has a Kekistan shirt against LGBTQ people and I think the wealthy, so they're realizing they're on the same side, I guess. Malang also tweeted another comic from Stone Toss that said, in nature, predators often camouflage themselves and prey like the copperhead or the trapdoor spider and others. And then it has a guy sweating, saying this is what feminism looks like, saying that male feminists are essentially predators. Stone Toss actually acknowledged this and said, the Taliban are better at memeing than leftoids. I mean, if you want some clear evidence that Islamic fundamentalists in Afghanistan and the American far right do have a lot of similarities, this sort of collaboration seems to really, really show you that. Now, what I'm gonna show you now is Malang tweeting loads of this stuff, which is against like communism, trans rights, against loads of that stuff. But like with my North Korea video, I said that propaganda is effective when you include a lot of the truth in it. And in the context of North Korea, I'm saying that because North Korea has suffered greatly under like the Japanese occupation and the Korean War and Japan and America are like big allies against North Korea, that is good for your propaganda because people have lived in experience of that stuff. So what Malang does here is I guess what all good propagandists do is he does include stuff that is like technically true. And I actually think he actually takes some left wing or just anti-war memes and sprinkles them in a lot of his memes that are just like straight up vile bigotry advocating for Islamic fundamentalism. So he has something here saying communism, it still works this time. And again, like I was saying, he has Muslim woman shows a woman in the kitchen wearing a burqa and then it has feminist woman having a sign saying this is what feminism looks like and this is something they keep talking about on these meme accounts just how much better women have it under sharia law another one saying you know he's not apologetic for his grammar mistakes saying i purposely made those grammar mistakes because i don't respect english not sorry now this is the one which i'm saying is a bit true so he tweets a meme saying 1985 afghan fighting soviet invasion freedom fighter 2015 afghan fighting us invasion terrorist now like I was saying, this is pretty much true in the sense that the US had no problem funding loads of the people who would go on to become the Taliban when they were fighting the Soviets. You know, you saw that famous paper talking about like bin Laden being a freedom fighter, that stuff at the end of Rambo. And when they're fighting the US, suddenly, you know, they're all terrorists. So that is something that makes propaganda effective in that that is essentially the truth. Now, I guess this is something that also appeals to American conservatives and the far right in the sense that they're saying that Islam protects you against all these, I guess, in their eyes, leftist cultural influences. So you have someone doing like Zoidberg's pose, coloured in a rainbow flag, and it has like Disney, APAC, Pornhub, Netflix, Marvel, a hammer and sickle, an Antifa flag, a women's rights flag, Reddit, and the Chad guy is essentially just, you know, embracing Islam, looking all happy. Another one, they brainwashed you, and it has someone with another hammer and sickle, women's rights, um, rainbow flag on the head, and a guy who just is a Muslim saying, really? These guys obviously really don't like gay people, if that wasn't obvious, and they also say, average globo homo fan, average Taliban respecter. I just wanna point out here, this stuff is all really, really bizarre. Like, we live in some really bizarre timeline where people who look like they are in the front lines of the Taliban are posting really, really weird memes that you normally see, I guess, on American and British Twitter. But then now he posts another one, which a lot of people would agree with. Who needs regime change? It has loads of people who are in the CIA as well saying, oh my God, me, oh my God, me, oh my God, me. Because yes, the CIA, the Americans have done so much regime change in the world. So to a lot of people who are on the right and maybe just general people, the Taliban looks like more legit because they've been fighting this regime change 
for you know decades at this point, and they're people who I guess won it in a civil war, and the Americans have overthrown them and don't want them in power. Now again, something that appeals to the American right, how Western media sees the world, progress, again, lots of stuff for LGBT rights, and then regress, just like traditional families, wearing some more traditional clothing, and again, with the LGBT stuff, you people are prejudiced against us, your culture is discriminatory, biased, homophobic, and a threat to our LGBT community. Have someone who looks like Malang or whatever saying, yes. Now, again, this is why I think far-right conservatives like the Taliban is because they're unapologetic about it. They can just say they don't like gay people, or they don't like Jewish people, or they don't like trans people. They can just say it, and there's no consequences because now they're in charge. And they're saying stuff, the far-right and general conservatives wish they could say more in public without either getting cancelled and a public pushback of course there are discrimination laws as well but that mean that you can suffer obviously legal consequences for saying a lot of this stuff so so far i haven't actually laughed at the memes i think they're funny i just think they're bizarre like that's where my like i guess laughter at it comes from i have to admit i don't know if this is right or wrong but i found this one a little funny and i think that is kind of the point because it's trying to like humanize the taliban a bit more like, these guys have a great sense of humour, and they're funny to everyone, so... A Taliban fighter saying, Hey Joe, look, I got drip. And he's wearing, like, what clothes you would probably associate with these insurgent groups. Haha, <laughs> silly Talibans, you can't have drip. And then it has the Taliban wearing the leftover uniforms by the Afghan and US Army and Joe Biden, basically very distressed by this. This one got a little chuckle out of me when I first saw it, just because I've been saying a lot of stuff about my drip on like my community tab and stuff. Another one, filings of Americans crying for their taxes. And these guys attack a lot of Western Muslims as well. So Western Imams in 20 years of occupation and so-called Islamic Republic in Afghanistan, I sleep. Western Imams in the first 10 days of new Taliban controlled Afghanistan, real shit. Another one from the Simpsons, look at the American with his fancy Zionist lies. Those two farmers chuckling. The enemies of our Islam and Sharia and the future of our children. So someone saying no, indoctrination, evil, religio cucks. And the guy also saying so cool, seeing the LGBT stuff again. So someone called Kaza Bakali is another one of these meme accounts. Here he's posting something. Will women have rights in the new Afghanistan? Women will enjoy all the rights given to them by Islam. Another one of Pepe the Frog smiling as the US flee and McDonald's is on the US embassy and the LGBT flag burns. These guys also like to promote the Afghan armed forces. I think it's called Badri 1313, which is like their elite commando group of Taliban who have taken most of the US and Afghan army equipment for themselves. So these guys like to tweet this a lot, probably to show like how modern they are. And it's all about this projection of the Taliban being, I guess, not backwards like you think. They are pretty modern, they have a sense of humour, they just believe in protecting their culture, and look, they're also using modern military technology when they could access it. So Malang also has an alternate account where he posts stuff like this, and I've seen loads of people put posts this, leftist people as well, that's what I was getting at earlier. Bush in office and Trump in office, and then Obama and Biden in office have the LGBT flag, while one of their bombers drops a bunch of bombs. Another one Malang tweets is, you should apologize for Islamic imperialism, has like India, Israel, Serbia, and the European Union, and all these people who did this say no. Malang also tweeting, pay the jizza and we'll leave you alone. I think that's the Islamic tax. And then someone else saying, give us one third of your income or we'll take everything from you and throw you in prison. Malang also tweets, American soldiers from hell watching Taliban take over Afghanistan in a matter of days and then the invaders who have been killed in Afghanistan. Some other stuff about transgender rights. So Malang posts this, God is real. How can I believe you if you don't have any physical proof? I'm actually a woman, so true. We're talking about this all being bizarre. This one is very bizarre. So a guy getting Reddit upvotes and it's like indigenous population defeats technologically superior invaders. It has the Ewoks from... Return of the Jedi, then this guy is crying while he gets downvoted. Indigenous population defeats technologically superior invaders and showing the Taliban when they took over Kabul. Another one with Islam being a protector against the European Union, Judaism, LGBT rights and communism. Now, like I was saying earlier, Malang also has a YouTube channel and he posts a lot of stuff that would seem quite hard to get if he wasn't either recording it himself or getting it sent him directly. So like I said, this guy is pretty well connected if it's not his own stuff, 
or he's running a social media account from the Taliban, maybe from another country. Now, OP India is saying that authenticity of these accounts could not be confirmed. Its following and followers list does appear to suggest that the account does belong to a Taliban member. There also appears to be consensus among journalists on the social media platform, but this is indeed a Taliban account. So before we move on to a bit more of the analysis about the far right specifically, now I want to talk about just broadly conservative. So I want to play a little clip from one of my older videos where I just show you conservatives all simping for the Taliban. A lot of your favorites included like Candace Owens and Nick Fuentes. Paul Joseph Watson, low key bigging up the Taliban, he, he retweeted, Walk past Afghan boys dramatically retelling the story of looters taken down by locals in the Taliban. Everywhere you go, people are excitedly talking about how criminals who had been freely terrorizing Kabul for months are finally getting the punishments they deserve. Um, Liam McCullum tweeted a snippet of the Taliban leaders talking about freedom of speech and um, Facebook who claim to promote it while still censoring it. This question should be asked to those people who are uh, claiming to be promoters of freedom of speech uh, who do not allow uh, publication of all information. You sh I can ask Facebook uh, company. Uh, this question should be asked to them. We've reached the next level when the Taliban is hitting at the totalitarianism of the US. And yes, they are telling the truth here. Big tech in collusion with the Democrats have destroyed the elements that gave America the moral high ground in discussions about freedom worldwide. Some are replying that moment when the Taliban makes more sense than the US president, surreal. The quartering, Taliban more pro First Amendment than the US government. Just another embarrassment. And underneath this tweet, Taliban is based. Taliban is going to ban abortion, vaccines and gay marriage. Maybe we've been fighting on the wrong side for 20 years. Taliban are the only people building back better. So it's not surprising. The Taliban are conservative. These Americans are conservative. They're going to have a lot of agreement on loads of this stuff. Now to get it to more of an extreme level, I guess, why the American far right is openly admiring the Taliban on MSNBC. This is quite a good article just documenting this stuff. As the Taliban seized full control in Afghanistan last month, praise for the brutal group came from a seemingly unlikely sector, the far right. Encrypted chats and online forums in the US were peppered with far right extremists praise for the Taliban victory and their anti-feminist and anti-LGBTQ agenda Users shared memes promoting the Taliban as the good guys, celebrated the group's willingness to execute dissenters, and compared their own struggle against liberal godlessness with the Taliban's rejection of Western decadence. Now admiration for the Taliban has spread to a handful of pro-Trump conservatives and to Donald Trump himself, who praised the group as smart and good fighters. Matt Gates described the Taliban as more legitimate than the Biden administration, while Donald Trump Jr. tweeted support for the Taliban's critique of big tech. In many ways, the far right's admiration of Islamist extremism is nothing new. Far right extremists have long seen parallels with Islamist terrorist ideas about a clash of civilizations and a rejection of the liberal West, multiculturalism, feminism, and LGBTQ and minority rights. Islamist and white supremacist terrorists express similar apocalyptic visions and parallel desires for a territorial caliphate and a white ethno state. They deploy the same kinds of violent terrorist strategies from the swift execution of their enemies to the embrace of martyrdom to accelerate the process towards the end times. But the far right's praise for the Taliban comes at a moment when the far right's growth has been driven in no small part by vocal opposition to Islam and immigration, especially through fear mongering about the supposed threat of terrorism posed by ordinary Muslims. The far right English Defence League was established in 2009 in, in response to an Islamist group's demonstration. France's far right National Front has relied heavily on anti Islamist messaging, such as the 2010 election poster showing a burqa clad woman in front of a map of France and the words No to Islamicism. Actual efforts to collaborate across far right and Islamist scenes are rare. Hardcore white supremacist extremist groups and channels regularly share Islamic State group and Al-Qaeda propaganda, including attack manual instructions and bomb making information and violent imagery. But historically, Islamist terrorists have been less interested in supporting the efforts of the extreme right, who they tend to view as part of the broader Western enemy. There is now some indication this is changing. New research tracing online interactions between Salafi jihadi and white supremacist groups show that across ideological discussions on telegram channels align around issues like both movements shared hatred of Jewish people, 
Such alliances are nascent and potentially superficial, but nonetheless concerning. If there's one thing we've learned from the past few years of extremist mobilization, it is that strange coalitions are possible in ways that heighten the risk of spontaneous violence. So to add a small caveat to that, there are some neo-Nazi Satanist groups that often have members who bizarrely join Islamic extremist groups because along with their like neo-Nazi views, because of their really hardcore Satanist views, they feel like they just have to inflict pain on the world. And doing that can come in any form. So helping groups like Al-Qaeda is good because just the mere violence of that group is good for your Satanist neo-Nazi vision. Now, I've often argued with people about like Islamic terrorism and I've said like, Basically, most of the terrorism done in the West is done by right-wing white supremacist groups and by an extension, most terrorist groups are right-wing. And they say that's simply not true. The Taliban aren't right-wing. These guys are conservatives as well. And that's why you see so much similarities between them. And part of this meme war you can see, at least in my head, is that these Taliban people are trying to appeal to Western alt-writers or Western conservatives by throwing in some, I guess, some more legit criticisms through memes of US imperialism in Afghanistan, while at the same time having other memes from an Islamic perspective, a fundamentalist Islamic perspective, also criticizing trans rights, Marxism, promoting, I guess, family values, the, I guess, nuclear family, traditional clothing and stuff like that. And to a lot of people who are conservatives in America, that's appealing. And the only problem before has been that these people are Muslims and they're not white. That's the main problem. There's something I spoke about on the Bad Praxis Twitch stream because most people who are on the panel with me, shout out to Kennedy and Omni there, are about the same age as me. So 25 or a bit older. And what I was saying is for our generation, you grow up and you are brainwashed about Muslims by the mainstream media, right? So all these Islamic extremist groups and insurgent groups, they're all lumped together. Taliban is the same as Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is the same as ISIS. ISIS is the same as the Taliban. These are also the same for some reason as Saddam Hussein. These are the same as Iran. These are the same as Hamas. Back in the day when the internet wasn't as big a thing, it was very hard on purpose because of like the war on terror to distinguish between these groups, right? So this is how these generalizations and even racializations of Muslims have come about and has been so effective in propaganda. But because of the use of memes specifically, who are memes really directed to? Mostly younger people, I'd say. Maybe teenagers, a bit older, people in their 20s. But the Taliban seem like they're trying to appeal to younger people to get them to, I guess, support them or at least view them as more, I guess, humans. But something I also noted is that my sister is a bit younger than me and I was talking about the response to Israel, Palestine and Israel bombing Gaza this year. And I said, I've never seen anything like this. And I think finally, because younger people have grown up during the war on terror, but as it was really ramping down, so younger people like, like 18 year olds or teenagers, they're not as brainwashed about Muslims as we are. And while the alt-right might hate Muslims generally, and because of the ramping down of the war on terror, a lot of people, I guess younger people in the alt-right, they don't believe Islam is an existential threat to the West, like everyone used to believe, like stop the Islamic takeover of the West. They don't believe that anymore. They believe what is the biggest threat to the West now is leftism and trans rights and civil rights for minorities and stuff. That's the biggest threat. So anyone standing up to that now, in a militaristic fashion it seems, is actually good. That's why I feel like the alt-right, who really were born out of the Trump era, and did take on this massive anti-Islam stance, just broadly, I think the reason that a lot of them don't care about this stuff as much is because they weren't brainwashed by the war on terror. So they might still hate non-white people, but the threat of Islam isn't as big a threat as previous generations were led to believe by the media, by anyone basically pushing this stuff during this extreme hysterical climate during the war on terror. But just generally, we live in this social media age now. I said they're promoting the Taliban commando unit wearing, I guess, high tech military outfits and having M16s and M4s. And combined with this meme stuff, combined with the videos of them using bumper cars, eating ice cream, going to the gym and everything like that, it is humanizing the Taliban more. And that was bound to happen with, I guess, social media 
be, I guess, a more democratic form of getting your news as individuals can share this stuff. And just like with Malang posting his memes, he's also posting videos. So it does humanize the Taliban more, but it also humanizes them in a way that alt-right might find more appealing because like, here are these guys, maybe they're not too different from us, but they're standing up for their culture their religion, they're standing up against this leftist brainwashing done by people like Biden or weird Democrats, so they believe. And that is why they can find it easier to support these guys, whereas maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago, you're not getting any of this humanization. The whole Western media apparatus is intent on demonizing all Muslims as part of like this extremist movement. Anyway, that is it for the video. I hope I showed some of you who maybe don't use Twitter how bizarre this meme stuff is, and hope I made a good point about the alt-right stuff. If you liked the video, please leave a like, leave a comment on your thoughts. If you wanna follow me on social media, at The Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram. If you wanna join our communities, our subreddit and Discord are in the description as well. And if you wanna support my work, check out my Patreon. This video is 100% <laughs> being demonetized, and if you made it this far, thank you for watching.